Uh, Graham Hancock has become a teacher of neo-Gnostic doctrine, specifically that the serpent in the Garden of Eden is the good guy of the Genesis creation story, and that Yahweh, or the Abrahamic God, is a demon, a bad guy. And he said as much in his Joe, uh, Joe Rogan podcast, and it reminded me of a talk that I heard him, uh, I heard the YouTube video of a talk that he gave when he was describing one of his DMT uh, experiences, and in this DMT experience he was taken to a place of serpents, and one of the serpents coiled around him, and I thought he was going to say that, you know, he was horrified by this, that it, that it was a bad part of the trip, but he says it coiled around him, and, and the serpent looked him in the eyes, and then he says, I felt love. He felt love from the eyes of this serpent. I want to suggest to you, I've for years enjoyed the research, the wonderful, interesting research of Graham Hancock. I want to suggest to you that this neo-Gnostic theism, this uh, spirituality, this uh, new um, resurgence of Gnosticism, with people increasingly in the uh, alternative alternative research community and in the um, in the research of, of occult knowledge, uh, reviving the Gnostic tradition. I think this is a um, a reaction a reaction to the humanism and the secularism that has been. In, I know it is a reaction to the the Richard Dawkins style uh, atheism and secularism that has been imposed on us for so long. And I think that's part of what Satan has been uh, doing. In uh, That's part of what his goal has been, because no society has ever continued very long uh, secular and atheistic. It's never been the basis of any successful uh, society. So I think Satan has been pushing that not as a, uh, as a, a primary trap, but as something that, like, like pulling a cord uh, to the breaking point that, that that's going to cause a reaction, and that the re and the reaction, the natural human because we are spiritual, we are theistic as human beings, and the natural human revulsion to the worldview of materialism and atheism is producing something even more dangerous than that atheism. In other words, I'm suggesting that this uh, neo-Gnosticism and a lot of these um, occult, um, the revival of occult uh, versions of theism, whether it's polytheism or Gnostic monotheism, which is really a kind of polytheism, is actually more insidious, more serpentine, and more dangerous than humanism or atheism in and of itself. And when that first occurred to me uh, recently, I thought maybe I was wrong. And then uh, within a few minutes, as I was pondering this, I remembered that Solomon has a proverb. And that proverb is, do you see, in the King James I think it says, seest thou, or do you see a man who is wise in his own conceit. Some of the other versions say, uh, I trust the King James uh, in most things, but some of the other versions say, wise in his own eyes. Wise in his own conceit. Seest thou a man who is wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than that man. And of course, Solomon says uh, elsewhere that the fool says in his heart, there is no God. But Solomon tells us there's more hope for a fool. In other words, it's better to be Richard Dawkins. A fool like Richard Dawkins, an atheist, than to fall into the kind of self-glorifying, humanistic spirituality that these uh, neo-Gnostics, uh, reactionaries to... And a lot of these people, like... Um, Graham Hancock, Rupert Sheldrake, uh, you know, Joe Rogan, are really heavily into 
pharmacia. That is the use of psychotropics, psychedelics, and I am not someone who says that those things are evil in and of themselves. There's a time and a place for everything. Uh, everything's clean to the eater who eats with Thanksgiving. All uh, food is clean. But as St. Paul says, um, not everything benefits. Everything's lawful to me, but not everything is profitable. And these people are encountering entities. And they're not giving glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they're, they're encountering entities in these um, uh, psychotropic, psychedelic states um, that are bigger than them, the way that you and I are bigger than ants or than mice, and that are able to seduce them. Seducing, what the Bible says, calls seducing spirits. And the Bible says very clearly, don't give heed to seducing spirits. And what I'm telling you now, I'll wrap this up for now, but uh, is that Graham Hancock has a seducing spirit. Uh, if he's perfectly possessed, he is a seducing spirit. Only he and God know. But the distinction is moot because effectively he's become a spokesperson for the serpent of old from the garden. These guys are bad news. Uh, it would be better to be Richard Dawkins than them, and he's a fool. So watch out for Graham, Han Graham Hancock. Watch out for Rupert Sheldrake. Watch out, and I love these guys. I mean, watch out Watch out for also for, um, uh, I don't know that he's into psychotropics, but w uh, w watch out for uh, the one who wrote um, the book um, uh, Yahweh, the, the, the Two-Faced God. Um, what is it, news and views uh, from the Nefarium, Joseph Farrell. I love these guys. They're so interesting. Their research is so interesting. But they delve into occult subjects, and they are either on, very much on the periphery of Orthodox Christianity or completely outside of the universal faith or, or overt enemies. But what I'm telling you is they're enemies. What they have in common is that they... I'm not sure about Rupert Sheldrake on this, but that uh, Joseph Farrell and Graham Hancock both um, trash Yahweh from a kind of neo-Gnostic point of view uh, as a demon, as, as though it was evil for, for Yahweh to require Abraham to sacrifice his son. Um, Yahweh didn't do that ultimately, but he did require Abraham to be willing to do that. And they condemn Yahweh as a demon, as, as someone evil for that. Um, this is uh, Antichrist, and these are seducing spirits. Don't give heed to them. Don't pay heed to them. You've been warned. So I've been watching over the past um, 20, 25 years as um, this revolution has been occurring uh, through the internet as people have more and more and more been rejecting, let me wipe the dirt away from here, rejecting the old atheism and rejecting atheism and rejecting materialism, but what's replacing it increasingly is uh, liberalized or watered down versions of Christianity, and I shouldn't, I'm not really comfortable, comfortable with the w phrase liberalized or the word liberalized, that's not the right description, but humanized, let me say, for lack of a better word, uh, humanized Christianity or spirituality. Sometimes it doesn't even claim to be Christianity, but the kind of Christianity that people like Rupert uh, Sheldrake and others who have very interesting ideas, very interesting talks, very interesting insights into the world around us, but essentially come down to a spirituality or a Christianity that is... Um, stripping the Bible of its literal meaning uh, often, not only, because the Bible is allegorical sometimes, the Bible is rhetorical sometimes, but the Bible sometimes is very much uh, literal. And uh, more importantly, uh, reducing Christianity to uh, an approach to God on humanistic terms. Men approaching God 
uh, through some version of Christianity or non-Christian spirituality on their own terms. And what I've been sensing and what sort of crystallized for me right now at one o'clock in the morning and why I'm making this video is I was thinking about the kind of spirituality that Rupert Sheld Sheldrake, and I like the guy, I really, I've spent hours listening to Rupert Sheldrake. I think he's on to so many, he's fascinating, he's on to so many interesting um, studies and, and his scholarship is very, very wonderful. Uh, but it, it actually wasn't uh, Sheldrake that was uh, I was listening to tonight. It was uh, Graham Hancock uh, on the Joe Rogan experience, and I was I flashed back to something that Graham Hancock said in another talk that I heard uh, about a year ago, where he talked about his DMT experience, uh, one of his first DMT experiences, I believe, and he talked about seeing. Um, a serpent being in his DMT experience coil itself around him and it coiled itself around him and gazed into his eyes this giant serpent that he described uh, encountering in a, during a psychedelic an intense psychedelic experience and when Graham Hancock was telling that I was thinking okay and, and you realize the thing was evil right? The thing, you know, when a serpent coils itself around you, it's going to devour you. And no, that's not what he said. He says, I looked into its eyes and I felt love. I remember very distinctly, Graham Hancock said that this serpent that he encountered that coiled itself around him, looked into his eyes, and he felt love. And I thought, oh my God, this man is deceived. Deceived. And, you know, the, the, the classic metaphor of the... the classic uh, story of the serpent you know, um, serpent charmer or the serpent charming the charmer. Who's charming whom? When the serpent looks into your eyes, that's the question. When the serpent looked into Eve's eyes, and when a serpent looks into your eyes, and, and you're charmed, or the serpent is charmed, who is char charming whom? And I flashed back to that because in uh, this podcast on uh, Joe Rogan, I heard Graham Hancock describe the Gnostic and endorse the Gnostic point of view where Yahweh or Allah or the Abrahamic God who requires Abraham to sacrifice uh, his son, although he didn't really require it, but required him to, you know, go right up to the point of it. And then God himself sacrificed his son for us. But nonetheless, God required this obedience of Abraham. Abraham was ready to do it. Um, as Paul says, knowing that God could, in fact, raise Isaac from the dead. God didn't let him do it. But um, I digress. Uh, Hancock is, endorses the Gnostic uh, spirituality, the Gnostic take on Christianity, which is not really Christianity, which is the um, position where Yahweh really is a demon. Yahweh is a demon. The Abrahamic God is a demon. And the true savior of the world in the Gnostic uh, pantheon is the serpent. And it made me flash back to the story of Graham Hancock's DMT experience. And I suspect that uh, this uh, Gnostic, uh, uh, this uh, affinity for the Gnostic pantheon precedes Graham Hancock's DMT experience. But I could be wrong. Uh, maybe, maybe the DMT experience came first. It sort of doesn't matter, because um, his interpretation, whether whichever came first, it's very important that he cast the serpent in his DMT experience and the serpent in the garden as the loving, good one. Now, I think that people are being set up, and, and, we, and chills came over me, and what's left of my hair <laughs> stood up on my head and the back of my neck when I, when I realized that the new spirituality that is emerging is more dangerous than the uh, old atheism or even than the, the postmodern atheism or the kind of atheism uh, represented by people like Richard Dawkins. And I immediately, because I know Richard Dawkins is a, an enemy of Rupert Sheldrake and of all people like Graham Hancock and all these uh, people who are representing the new spirituality, uh, Terence McKenna, uh, the people who... Uh, you know, tend to be uh, tied together through psychedelics, psychotropics, and this new openness to spirituality. 
and I and I suddenly felt a nostalgia. I thought, wow, I like, um, I like, in a very strange way, it came over me that that uh, people like Richard Dawkins, it's better to be Richard Dawkins than to be these new uh, spiritualists. And then I thought, why am I saying that? These men are theistic. They believe in God. Most of them are monotheistic, at least by their admission. Why would I prefer to be a fool who says in his heart there is no God like uh, Richard Dawkins? And then I remembered one of the Proverbs of Solomon. Uh, I forget which proverb it is, but it says, it's, Do you see a man who is wise in his own conceit? Other versions than the King, King James say wise in his own eyes. But I trust the King James for the most part. Wise in his own conceit. There's more hope for a fool than for that man. Think about it. Think about it. And then I realized my first instinct was correct. Richard, da it's better to be in the position of Richard Dawkins than to be in the in the because Satan, Satan himself, who is wise, in it, just like his children, or his children, just like Satan, are wise in their own conceit. And neither the children of Satan nor Satan himself are atheists. <laughs>